Uh, President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky. Here. Treasurer Brandstant. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Member McFarland. Here. Member Vanderkellen. Here. Okay, we're all here. All present all accounted for. Great. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda items tonight. Um, you probably reviewed those in your packet. Approval of the minutes from the prior meeting and the organizational meeting. Um, also, a staff member resignation. Uh, administration is seeking approval of purchase order to CWG of Vernon Hills, Illinois of 46900 and some dollars to upgrade the storage hardware for our Microsoft Exchange email system. We have approval of uh, two months of bills for November of $7,577,284 and December of $7,145,851. And there also in 24C and D are listing of the purchase orders and 24D of the purchase card transactions. Uh, I guess I'd first open it for anything else to be added to the consent agenda or extracted for individual discussion. I want to talk about the email. Yes. And suggesting that we go to Gmail, which is free, which Google Docs is also free. So. And I, I spoke also to New Tech. I called them today to double check with Paul Buck that that is what they also use and it is free. So I think it's something we need to consider. No comment at this time. Okay. Uh, do you do you wish to have that removed from the consent agenda? Yes. And or can we postpone it until people have time to look at it further? <clears throat> Any other comments from board members? <clears throat> if if it's <clears throat> Carl, please. Well, I just wanted to suggest I'm not sure where this leaves us technology. This has been in the plan and it's been in the budget right. all year. So at a, la at a last minute to make a change like this may have implications for technology. Mr. Valindi, can you comment on that or not? Yeah, I think the utilities are going to replace these and then 24 7 So is this that we're replacing hardware, not necessarily uh, the, the server base? The Technology, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Good clarification. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So this is not the Outlook Express. No. Okay. No, these are the servers, hardware. Wasn't there something in here about the Microsoft Outlook, sixty thousand dollars? Am I missing that? This is the server for Outlook. It's where we store okay. all our email. Well, no. Then let's not postpone that. Sorry, that's not the Gmail. So you wish to keep it in the consent agenda? Yes. Any other questions or comments about the consent agenda? <clears throat> See none, take a vote on, uh, I'll take a motion. All right. Mm -hmm. Move approval on consent agenda items 2.1 through uh, 2.4D. Support. Move by Dr. Kaminsky and support by Treasurer Brandstadt. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. At this point, we move into the uh, part of the agenda where public is free to address the board. Um, we have no prior submissions. Anybody in the audience care to wish the board? And if you do, please restrict your time to five minutes to keep the horde from coming to being delayed from other people speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your school district and name, please. See no takers. We'll move on to Board of Education matters, in which case I will turn it over to Mr. Allen. Well, this is the fun part of the job for me, and hopefully it is for you, because um, I say this every year, although I'm not sure how many of our community members really uh, know this is true. There are a number of, board of boards of education, city councils, and so on, um, governmental agencies, that actually have legally the right to pay yourselves for doing what you do. Some board members in some school districts will get paid $25 or $35 per meeting, including study committee meetings and so on. There has been a long history here, and in my six years of being here in the district, no one has ever shared with me that the board at the organizational meeting has asked to be paid for their service. So this truly is a voluntary job. And for those of you who have been around for a while and those of you who haven't but have been uh, recognizing the tough decisions that this board has had to make uh, really for about eight years now, you know there's nothing easy about serving as a Board of Education member. So January, typically in the state of Michigan, is the uh, board member uh, appreciation month. 
Um, and on behalf of that, we have some gifts uh, in front of you. You'll see some cards, which uh, tend to be more delightful for you to read than anything <laughs> I can say or any gift that we can give you. Uh, the cards were made by Kelly Jacobs, uh, third grade students at Plymouth Elementary. So if you choose to respond with an email, um, that's the teacher that you'll want to thank. And uh, it's really neat. It's things like that that makes these jobs really worthwhile, um, if you ask me, as well as understanding what a service um, it is that you provide for the Midland community that we we're all so proud to serve. In addition to that, uh, we have a framed um, certificate for you. Um, this happens to be Mr. Wasserman. So I told him before the meeting that he was also getting one. But it says your name, Board of Education, and appreciation for your dedicated service to the children of Midland Public Schools. And it's signed by me as superintendent for School Board Appreciation Month, January of 2013. So from me, sincere thank you for what you do. These are not easy jobs, as Scott and Kim will soon find out when you're trying to balance what we all consider best practices in quality educational uh, opportunities that we have a long history for, um, for being known for here at Midland Public Schools. Um, you will certainly uh, appreciate this for the two of you, perhaps more a year from now than now, but we offer the same uh, thank you to you. Uh, Mr. Wasserman, it's my pleasure to give this to you. Thank you for stepping up and being a board officer and board president for the second time uh, during your stint uh, of service to the board. Thank you. And thank all of you for everything you do on behalf of children. And on behalf of the board, it's, uh, I accept this, and I hope everybody else does, but it's, we do it as a labor of love. That's why we've never, ever asked to be paid. And as long as I'm on the board, hopefully no one will ever suggest it. And um, it's a real thank to the staff, meaning faculty, administrators, and everybody that make middle public schools what they are, and our parents. Without our parents driving their kids, this would be a impossible job. So we appreciate the parents who uh, really have an interest in their kids' education in, in, the, in middle public schools. So thank you. And, and Carl, I did read one of my thank you cards in a quick minute before, the, before this. I thought you'd appreciate this. It's uh, thank you for being president of the Board of Education. Tell, tell Dr. Ellinger, my mistake last meeting, uh, <laughs> we need more snow days. <laughs> 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 you make our school look great. So, uh, so you are the head of the Board of Education, so I bet your job is hard. Truly, tr uh, yours truly, Madison. So you may have fulfilled one of her wishes. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that you heard before, uh, before we called uh, school today. So also related to that is a gift box to you from the Midland City Education Association. And then moving right into 4.2, the Midland City Education Association has also made a $200 donation to the Looking Sharp Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation in honor of Board of Education Recognition Month. So we want to make sure we thank the MCA as well. Well, I'll take board comments on that right now. Wow. Thank, thank them very much. Very nice. That, thank that so is much. a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. Very thoughtful. Yep. And I, I love the, I've always said I've loved the, the music parents and the two entrepreneurial things they have done over the last five or six years from tuning up to this. And uh, I'm, I hope each of us can see our way to help uh, contribute to that effort. And thank you, MCA, for not only donation to our kids, but uh, in our names. It's, it's very nice. Thank you. So continuing to um, item 4.3, I think Cindy's going to put the screen down for us. Every fall to late fall, sometimes even early winter, uh, we provide what we call the Distinguished Service Awards um, to our staff, and I'll, rec I'll, I'll specifically mention which staff this refers to as part of the presentation. And we uh, solicit usually three or four um, staff members um, uh, for this very prestigious award. Um, in an effort to recognize members of the district support staff, the Board of Education established the Distinguished Service Awards uh, in 2002. This annual award is given to four deserving support staff members who go above and beyond what really is expected in their day-to-day -day duties of their job. With the mission of Midland Public Schools serving as its focus, the Board of Ed acknowledges the valuable contribution made by its service employees in providing an excellent education for our students. A quality educational system can only occur when every employee group works together to promote the welfare of the children in the community it serves. Full-time and part-time employees in the following employee groups are eligible to receive the Distinguished Service Award. Administrative assistants and office professionals, 
grounds crew, interpreters for the hearing impaired, managers, maintenance staff, paraprofessionals, and transportation <coughs> staff. The criteria for eligibility is that the person is nominated must have been employed with the district for at least three years, must not be retiring the year following nomination. So I guess these people are locked in for <laughs> at least that one. And they must perform their job above expectations and requirements. And then DSA recipients receive a nice uh, financial stipend and a beautiful engraved um, chime clock. Uh, we always invite you uh, when we do those presentations. They happen out at the work sites um, of these individuals, frequently in the buildings. Um, uh, so please feel, I always feel welcome to attend those when you get the notice from Mrs. Young that they're on the calendar. These people that receive this recognition are some of the most grateful for being acknowledged in that fashion of anybody that I've ever met in my career. It really is special when you can see that. And kudos to Mrs. Baker because she doesn't miss very many of these. And that really means something when you have the opportunity to show up as a board member and participate in this. So let me show you a little bit about who the winners are. They're modeled after the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Award. Of course, it wouldn't happen without the generosity of the Roland Gerstacker Foundation. I reviewed the criteria and process. It's grant funded. And then there's a committee uh, uh, that provides the makeup and plays the role in identifying those staff members. In the past, the DSA chair has been Mike uh, Decker this immediate past year. Board of Education member Ken Malt. You can see our two principals, Bridget Hockemeyer and Steve Poole. There is an MCEA representative, Lynn Verdusco. Uh, community member parents, Sula, Susan Colake, and then you can see the previous recipients from the, pro, from, the, from the 2011 year. They always serve on the committee. And of course, those are Mary Chiltern, Denise uh, Helling, Norm Retzloff, and Patty Walters. One of our recipients this fall was Mrs. Brennan, and she's been a member of the Midland Public School staff since 1993, as you can see. All of her MPS years have been spent working with students as a paraprofessional at Plymouth Elementary School. And when they had the celebration for her, it was like <coughs> going to a uh, breakfast uh, buffet um, in their media center. The staff was really gracious, I thought, and brought in food. And it was a huge celebration for the staff. And we also used it as an opportunity to thank the staff for the wonderful distinguished uh, honor they received as being um, one of the um, honorary schools from the state of Michigan. The, the name is uh, escaping me right now. So Mrs. Brennan was extremely pleased and I think surprised that she was chosen as, the D as one of our four DSA winners. Uh, here's a few quotations by those who nominated her. If the intent of this award is to recognize superior service, Joan certainly deserves 10 of these. She's amazing with special needs students, so patient and loving and caring. She's a great asset to MPS and an even greater asset to our special needs population of students out in the building. She's a great mentor. Uh, this person that nominated her had watched and learned from her over the years. So we invite the families of the recipients to come. Sometimes they bring their extended families. Uh, it means something so special to them. So we were happy to be there. Uh, second nominee was uh, Tim Chisholm. He joined the MPS staff in 1980 as a, a league custodian. He has held his current building position of building manager at HH Dow High School for the past 12 years. Tim was shocked. We always give the folks an opportunity to say a few words to the building staffs that they work so closely with. And I'll tell you, Tim is a man of few words. Uh, he didn't have too much to say. and. Uh, but he's, I think, an enormous component of what makes Dow High School and a building that large really work as well as it does. He cares a lot, and he has high standards for uh, his own work and how that building looks. He always has a kind word and a winning smile despite his busy, busy days. His work ethic and gentle manner help to make Dow really the great place that it is. He's a critical part of the team at HH Dow, uh, according to someone who nominated him. <coughs> he's always ready and willing with a smile and a can-do attitude to assist the staff no matter what or when we ask or need anything from him, I can think of no one more deserving to receive this recognition. And like all our building managers, he's often around at very odd hours on the weekend doing his building checks. And I get into the buildings on the weekend also, and we have scared the bejeepers out of each other. <laughs> on the uh, perhaps early on a Sunday morning, and we'll chat for a little bit, just kind of get uh, catch up with each other. Uh, our third awardee was uh, Rita Klump. She joined the MPS staff in 1996 as an office uh, technical professional. 
She's in her ninth year in her current position as the administrative assistant to Dr. Ellison, our associate superintendent for curriculum. Rita works out here in the front line, and most of you are probably aware of who she is. She has a wonderful sense of humor. Um, she really um, is committed to the school district. She is committed, I think, to Kathy. Um, uh, she regularly goes above and beyond in the work she does for the entire curriculum division. They see Rita as someone that makes things happen and always with a smile. She does an excellent job at her responsibilities, and she extends herself to make sure that everyone knows that MPS is a premier district serving our students, employees, and families really in the exemplary style in which I think our community expects us to do that. We, um, we joke amongst the four of us um, uh, administrators on this side <coughs> of the building that it's really our support staff that sit outside our doors that make us look really good. They do the lion's share of the work that you see from us, and uh, Reed is one of those people that make us look really good. Also from this building and from the business department is uh, Jo Majeski. Uh, she began her career with Midland Public Schools in 1997, again as an office technical professional. Uh, for the past four years, Jo has taken on the responsibility of being the district's employee benefit go-to person. And if any of you work in a business and deal with benefits or HR practices, you know how much that world is right in the midst of changing with health care and so on. If you do it in a school system um, and you understand all the different ways that employees now can qualify for retirement, there's like five or six different ways they have to be tracked. This woman is on top of that, let me tell you. I don't know where we'd be without her, frankly. She's liked and respected by her colleagues in the business office and trusted by all who uh, call her with questions regarding, regarding their benefits. She is extremely confidential, and I think our staff throughout the district know that. Uh, jo takes the most complicated issues and problems, and she can simplify them for our employees and eases their concerns. She maintains a very high level of confidentiality, and she does it with absolute professionalism. She is customer service oriented and truly loves her job at Midland Public Schools. And Joe was our fourth person that received the distinguished um, um, honor, distinguished service honor uh, from the Gerstacker Foundation. Congratulations to our four very deserving uh, award recipients. Again, Joan Brennan, Kim Chisholm, Rita Kump, and Joe Majeski. And it's been my pleasure to showcase our staff in front of you. So you realize that they're the backbone of what we do and they represent all of you, I think, in an extremely high quality fashion as Board of Education members. So we should certainly be proud of them. Well, congratulations to all of them and, their, and thanks for their service. And it's nice that they're peer recognized and that uh, their peers see that in addition to their supervisors and others seeing that. So Carl, I'll turn it back to you for the next item. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, some of that I think most of you know. Uh, Janet Greif um, is our Midland High School principal, and uh, she has some of her staff. I'll let her introduce Carol and Amy um, to you. Amy Hutchinson is the level one assistant principal in the building, and Carol Neff is uh, our IB coordinator for the building and a social studies teacher, and she probably has some other titles too that I am uh, forgetting. Um, but these three ladies are perceived as leaders in their building. There is no doubt about that, which is why it's no surprise that uh, Janet has asked Amy and Carol, I'm sure, to uh, be here tonight. Um, the board is aware. Uh, I promised Roger that he'd be the first one to get a scoop on this once we went public. So this is his opportunity to do that. We're really excited about an international exchange program that we have for both students and staff at Midland High School, and it's going to begin uh, this coming fall. Um, it's actually going to start this spring, and we'll let Janet talk to you about that program because this really, I may have helped with the funding and approaching the foundation, but I don't deserve any of the credit uh, for this. This was her idea. It germinated with her and with uh, Janet and her staff. Uh, they put together an easy proposal for Janet and I uh, to make to the Gerstacker Foundation. So with that, Janet, it's all yours. Um, we are very excited to... Um talk all about our program and actually Carol and Amy as you learn in the presentation were also part of the Gerstacker Fellowship that kind of got us started thinking this way and it just ended up that we all three ended up at Midland High. I initially when I was in the program I was actually at Plymouth so three Gerstackers got together and we decided we'd better make something happen. 
with all the knowledge that Saginaw Valley gave us. So we're going to take turns presenting here, and um, first Amy's going to start. Janet just mentioned the Gerstacker Fellowship, and we uh, were all very uh, fortunate to take part in that. Um, district nominated, but fortunate enough to be selected to uh, be a part of that. This is uh, this slide shows a little bit about uh, what the fellowship is, and I think we would all agree that it's some of the best professional development we have ever had uh, as school leaders, uh, preparing us in all sorts of things, expanding our knowledge in finance and uh, uh, human uh, resources kinds of issues, and really helps us keep up to date helped us keep up to date with um, with current educational um, initiatives and, and things at the state level. Um, so uh, those are the different uh, years that each of us uh, were members of the fellowship. Uh, Janet in 08 and I followed in 09 and then Carol in the 2010 class. And basically what this experience did, because the capstone experience for the Gerstacker Fellowship is international travel. And each of us with our respective um, groups, our cohorts, spent two weeks um, in uh, Asia. We had different different trips, though, uh, but to China, Taiwan, Japan. Am I missing? Those are the three for each of us, right? Because they've, they've changed it since then. Um, and now there's a Gerstacker II program that all Gerstacker uh, fellows are um, invited to be a part of. So we're um, still all involved in that. But from that year-long experience that each of us had um, in those respective years, we really felt uh, challenged uh, to translate what we learned and were able to be recipients of uh, to our own schools. And it was just... Uh, uh, Lucky for all of us, I think, when Janet came to, to Midland High and three Gerstackers in the building, and we were able to put our heads together. One of the things that we felt was important is to take our mission statement. Um, we do a lot, of, you know, you all know how we connect what our mission states, either the district or the building mission, to try to, to make connections to see, to see that that happens. Um, you know, it's, it's a guiding educational principle or, or mission, obviously, uh, for what we do. So uh, Midland High's mission statement ends productive citizenship in a global society, and, and we can talk about that, and um, we wanted to bring that really to life. Another um, connection we felt was uh, very important was the uh, being an IB World School and taking that beyond the boundaries of the walls of Midland High. We have, <coughs> excuse me, internationalism in the IB curriculum. As a world school, we try to do things to bring uh, more of an international flavor to the building as a whole beyond the IB classes, but we thought, you know, this is Midland, Michigan. We have a lot of uh, people here associated with Dow and Dow Corning who have that international experience and connections. Um, let's bring it together as we think about our mission statement, being an Ivy World School, what can we do to translate this into an opportunity for our students? And lastly, as we were pulling our proposal together, we felt it was important to uh, focus on 21st century learning skills and don't necessarily need to go through all of those because I know the board uh, has dealt with those and and talked about ways to align, I think there's some chart somewhere that aligns um, things that we do in the district with IB and 21st century learning and, and other initiatives. But um, really, the first of five interdisciplinary themes is global awareness. So we took those, we really brought together our experiences, our, our what we, we had as fellows, and said, let's do it. Let's look at our mission. Let's, let's look at what it really means to be an Ivy World School. Let's look at 21st century learning and, and pull something together. And given all that, we sat down about probably, I don't know, maybe 20 hours and came up with what we thought would be a good exchange program. Our hope was that we could um, secure some funding so that students and teachers both would have the opportunity initially and hopefully the momentum from seeing how positive it is eventually could be self-supporting. 
So we sat down and wrote a proposal, again, taking into consideration all the things Amy mentioned. Um, of course, you can't just go to a map and throw a dart at it. Where are we going to go to? So we went back to Saginaw Valley, which had helped us all along. And they actually have a partnership with Minshuan University in Taiwan, in Taipei, right in the capital. So we went there and kind of said that we'd like to start an exchange. Could they help us? And they asked how we felt about Taiwan. And we said we felt pretty great about that. And so Dr. Yen, who is actually one of the former vice presidents from Saginaw Valley, works actually at Minshuan University and actually got them to be the only American accredited college in all of Asia, which now they actually, he wrote a book about it. In fact, he gave Carl gave, he gave both Carl and I a copy of this book. And they've changed the requirements, so they probably will be the only American accredited at this time college in Asia. So he was willing to work with us to find a suitable partner. So we knew we had something going, so we decided that we would um, write the plan and say that we would go to Taiwan. And then Carl and I met with the Gerstacker Foundation and did a presentation. And they were, um, interestingly enough, initially the presentation, our, our proposal was for two teachers and eight students. But talking with the people from the Gerstacker Foundation, they had very strong feelings that they thought that actually more teachers should go because of the impact the teachers would have on more students. So we changed our proposal to five and five, which actually was a good suggestion on their part. And we were fortunate that they generously awarded us $100,000 to start going. So next, Carl and I flew to Taipei, which Carl will say is a very long flight. Is it not, Carl? Uh, it is. I hope not to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 13 hours to Tokyo, and then you have two more hours after you get out of Tokyo. And we went to um, Taipei Fuxing, uh, the private school there, and met with the principal and the people there, and it was determined that we would take five teachers, five students, and the exchange would start this April. And then next October, because they were very clear that the Taiwanese probably wouldn't want to come in here in the winter because of the snow. They thought that the fall would be a nice time for them to come. So we felt that we would go there first, and then they would come, come here in the um, October. So we came up uh, next with an application process for all the students, because how we were going to pick, because obviously there was a lot of interest. So we established an application process. The students had to complete two short answer questions and also get two recommendations from members of our staff. Uh, we were very much overwhelmed with the response. We had, I believe, 39 students apply for the five slots. And the parent or the student, the teachers had, they didn't have to get teacher recommendations. Mm -hmm. They just had to say what they would how they would incorporate it in their classroom, what they hoped to um, do when they came back uh, from the experience. And we had, I believe, 13 teachers that applied. So 39 students and, and 13 staff. They were due on November 15th. Dear day. Which one is it? That one. And then we had a selection committee composed of eight teachers and uh, a lot of the teachers who had traveled overseas or who had taken other student groups overseas to kind of give us a sense of what we'd be looking for in our applicants, as well as uh, the administrators in the main office. And all the uh, applicants said that they would be very excited and willing to share what they learned when they came back. It was a very difficult process to, to narrow it down to the five, but uh, after several hours of meeting, we were able to do that. And here they are, Monique Albright, Mary Hillman, Georgina Leach, Mar Marnie Malacara, and Melissa Tono are our teachers, and Nate Fisher, Emily Kessler, Melinda Kothbauer, Elizabeth Ladwig, and Eddie Mul Mulford. And there they are. Wait, are they all from a specific grade, or? How did, how did you do that? We, we decided to focus on our juniors, fi figuring that they would come back and, and be able to share their knowledge as, as seniors. And that's also one of the reasons why we're going in April, because it's going to be after they take the MME. That really was a major part of our pitch to the foundation, because that gave them that whole year to build on that theme of living in a global society and internationalism. And it's an easy connect to that IB theme, uh, Angela. So. Uh, that got, a thing, I think, a very receptive audience from uh, uh, Mr. Ott and Mr. Brandt. 
I just had one question regarding the, the recipients, uh, for lack of a better term. What was their underlying theme in their response to their essays that moved them through the selection process? Was there something that stood out that other students maybe didn't respond to or didn't acknowledge? I think in their essays they responded with a, a sense of global awareness before some of them had even been overseas, although some of them have had international travel. That wasn't the criteria at all. It was the sense in which they knew how to give back, too, uh, okay. when they returned, what they hoped to do with it, and how they would incorporate it into a presentation, and how they would work with the teachers to, to bring that information back. There was just a, a, a level of a level of sophistication, I think, in their responses and what they said they would do when they got back. We did look at other things as well in terms of um, you know, just when you're reviewing an application, I think it's something we've all done. Uh, you, you begin with the professionalism of the application. Um, we looked at their grade point averages. We looked at the details and enthusiasm that was evident in the teacher letters. We created a rubric for all of those criteria, and that really uh, rounded out the picture. But it was very difficult. I mean, it was really close. It was very difficult. For number six, seven, and eight, it was very, <laughs> very sad. It was very difficult. Thank you very much. Um, what does the profile look like amongst IB diploma and IB certificate students in the last? What do you have there, Carol? You would. Three are all in IB classes. Okay. I'm sure there'll be many people. And, and we did look at GPA. That was another criteria because obviously, if they're going to be missing two weeks of school, I want to make sure that they're very good students and they haven't already had a lot of absences. So that was also part of the criteria, looking at their GPA. Not the sole criteria, but that was certainly part of it. Because they're going to be missing two weeks of class, yeah. we want to make sure that they would be able to keep Thank up with that. the homework. Lynn, I and I along that line, I think the teachers from what I know, are in a, in a wide range of um, curriculum as well. Yes. Correct? Yes, we have everyone from uh, psychology to history to math to special ed. We have a little bit of everybody. Yeah. yeah. I think that's more true. And actually, I, I just we just I just pressed send on purchasing the tickets. So we leave on April 12th, and we'll be returning on April 26th. And so I've just been working with Taiwan. I'm communicating with them right now, just this morning, actually. So I'm, we're pretty excited. So did you uh, commit to making the trip with him, uh, Mrs. Gray? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, if, if you've not made that trip, and I think, Jerry, you have, it, it, it's enormously demanding, especially on the way back. And Janet and I kind of had a pact that uh, we didn't want to do that again in our career. But given the culture that's involved, it's very, very important that you have someone from administration um, make this trip to help establish that ongoing relationship with this particular high school and, and their administrators. And I think it would have been culturally um, offensive to them if an administrator hadn't gone. And so I think Janet was trying to encourage me to go, and <laughs> I was delegating that responsibility to her, and she would be a much and better And who do you think won? <laughs> So and I will. So you're going to go to Midland High for two weeks? One. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't pitch that back, by the way. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to share with you, though, is why we made our trip there. We had a, a private, au private audience with the uh, Minister of Education from the country of Taiwan. And that was a very fascinating visit to hear them talk about what they think are the strength and growth areas of their educational offerings as, as a relatively small country, at least geographically and what they thought the strengths and weaknesses and what they either could or could not learn from us. Uh, that was a fascinating conversation. And if this group has the opportunity, Dr. Yen was the one that set this up, to visit uh, with that department again, it wouldn't surprise me. That would be a great thing for this group to do. And, and we've begun working with everybody. And for instance, I purchased um, Confucius Lives Next Door. It's a book about a gentleman. Actually, it's about Japan, but about the Asian culture, coming from America to the Asian culture. So we'll be meeting with this. We have a meeting with the parents on like February 27th. We'll be meeting with the students on some things to expect, and we'll give a little cultural background before we go there, and historical background also, so when they go to see all these things, they'll know what they're seeing. Yeah. Oh, Angela? Chance, are they staying with families? Are they staying with Great question. Actually, the students are staying with families, and um, but the adults actually are staying. Um, the university, Minchuan University, has a teaching hotel 
were students that are studying you know, food and beverage and hospitality, and that is actually the same place that Mr. Ellinger and I stayed, and that's where the, the adults will be staying. So coming up in the fall, we have a chance to maybe have the students come over here. Correct. Do we have any, uh, I know I've seen it on the MPS uh, Today Show, interviews and opportunities for people to understand a little bit what their impression is of our education system and well I'm sure we'll be setting up things of that I'm really anxious for for all of our students and teachers to come back to do a similar thing to see what their impression was what they've learned compared to you know our educational system so we're real excited about that very well done ladies it's okay. something you should be thank very you. proud of yeah, thank you. we're excited thank, thank you, you. Oh, can I can I also mention yes. one thing why uh, because Mrs. Greif may not stick around for this um, it's pretty incredible that this will embarrass Janet by me reading this but congratulations to uh, Principal Greif for being named the Distinguished Alumni Award recipient from Saginaw Valley State University College of Education by their Alumni Association the award recognizes distinguished service and accomplishments it is the most prestigious honor that SVSU bestows upon its graduates. And she's going to be honored at a 2013 alumni celebration on next Friday. So I didn't want to miss that opportunity to point that out to you uh, in front of the whole Board of Education. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you, guys. Yep. We'll move on to curriculum instruction, and we have a study committee minutes from Lynn sure. we met at Northeast on January 21st in the afternoon and we started out uh, with the, visiting the world of tech classroom of mr. Jorge Pena and he presented the course content and the many projects that are part of his program the group also visited the life management classes quilt display that showcased the quilts students made and are donating to the Linus program Students learn a skill and learn the importance of giving back. And the Linus program is where they make these quilts and they donate them to um, sick children. On return to the conference room, uh, Penny Miller Nelson, Career and Tech Ed Curriculum Specialist, and Jeff Lauer, Career Development Administrator, presented. And Mr. Lauer reviewed the new secondary course offering guide, which is moving primarily online for parent and student access. The guide, formerly known as What's Next, is a combination of middle and high school information because there is so much overlap in the career development and planning process. Then Mr. Lauer and Ms. Miller Nelson reviewed the current offerings relating to career development, careers, PE, health, art, music, industrial ed, business, and life management. In pursuit of continuous improvement, the district recognizes that we have solid opportunities for students but needs to continue to evolve to promote career development and look for ways to offer opportunities that will allow our students to explore all career pathways. We are also looking for ways to modernize content of some career and technical education classes to better align with high school offerings, workforce, and post-secondary trends, and the breadth of pathway options for our students. If the district decides to move to the IB MYP, we are prepared to adapt and develop options that fit with that change as well. There are many challenges in middle school career development and CTE that inf include infusing habits of success in all curricular areas, representing all career pathways appropriately either with courses or embedded activities, and most importantly, having the ability to develop the programs when the staffing tends to be an add-on of another assignment. Inconsistent staffing for these courses can hinder the development of the curriculum. Ms. Nel Miller Nelson is in the process of submitting staff curriculum development proposals for middle school CTE, and both of them continue their efforts in infusing relevance and 21st century skills in all curricular areas. We have great courses in place, but continue to look for ways to improve those offerings or add additional options or formats that address the changing world. And then we were going to have a focus schools update, but that is to be uh, postponed. We had several that were ill or not in attendance. And due to the importance of the topic, the focus schools discussion uh, was postponed to the next CAS study committee meeting, which is scheduled for February 19th. But following that, um, 
Jeff Jaster, the principal at Northeast Middle School, shared with the group strategies that the Northeast staff has developed to further address the needs of their students. And uh, as I said, the next meeting will be on February 19th from 1.30 to 3, and these minutes are available out in the hallway. And as always, the curriculum and special services committee meetings are very full, full of lots of great information, and of course, the highlights are always visiting the, the classrooms. That's our favorite part. Any questions or comments to Lynn? Seeing none, we'll move on to finance. Um, Linda, you've appreciably changed. <laughs> Not for the better. Articulate as Linda would be. Voice sounds a little different there. We have some gifts totaling seventeen hundred and sixty dollars. East Lawn PTO for books for the media center, Target field trip scholarship uh, for Plymouth second grade field trip to Wonders of Water Plants Around at the Chippewa Nature Center, Ty Iota Kai Sorority for Central Middle School Life Management class, Target field trip scholarship for an entrance fee for ninth grade. Dow High students to attend uh, the Center for the Arts performance of Romeo and Juliet. And from Philip and Lynn Baker, Kurt and Angela Branstadt, Richard and Donna Delinsky, and John and Diane Kaminsky, um, an athletic scholarship fund in honor of retiring board members. <coughs> I think you know who we're talking about. And lastly, we have a donation of uh, an item, McKay Press, 154 WebCore paper rolls. McKay Press has always been so good. And that's it for finance. Any questions? Thanks to the donors again. Uh, it's a long and, and uh, appreciated list. Okay, we'll move on to HR, and that's right back to you. Yes, we have one staff member who announced her retirement effective as of January 24th, 2013. That's Miss Emma Rittmeyer, our Braille tech uh, from Dow High School. Any questions to Gary that he didn't present on in terms of finances? Okay, we'll move on to, um, there's a list of the uh, correspondence to and from Board of Education uh, listed in your agenda, and also a list of the future meetings of the Board of Education. Um, I'd just like to make two comments. Uh, one is on the timings of three special meetings here because they are unique, uh, both for the public and for board members. On February 20th, 5.30, that's the special uh, meeting for the bond proposal. And or sinking. Plan. And or sinking plan. Yeah, to be so determined. So I highly uh, encourage you to be there and uh, do our prep before the meeting. And then the uh, April 29th is our budget workshop, which will be a very important meeting going into next year. And the July 15th is our summer um, organization meeting. So uh, please make note of those, especially the first two will be very important. Um, and Carl, towards that end, while it's not exactly this part of the agenda, and I can wait for your comments, uh, have there been any feedback from Treasury at all concerning our application? Um, not yet that I'm aware of. And they told us it might take a few weeks, but let me just expand on that a little bit, Jerry, because when we talked about it at the last meeting, this would be a repeat for some of our board members and even for <coughs> Roger, but we haven't had it out in front of the public. A um, couple weeks back, uh, we went down, we had a meeting with the uh, Michigan Department of Treasury. Uh, we presented to them um, our request uh, for a potential um, uh, May election for a technology bond for, in rough figures, uh, $20,800,000 uh, in that range, just slightly below $21 million. Uh, That would include lots of technology upgrades throughout the district, one-on-one -on -one computing, as well as um, uh, security technology, given safety of schools and how prominent that discussion has been around the country and you know, since right before the holiday. Uh, there's about a half a million dollars in there that would allow us to upgrade um, uh, security technology. We have been working uh, with uh, uh, Chief of Police here in Midland. He and I have met. Uh, we paid, played phone tag again today. We're going to invite him to come in and meet with uh, our principals and, and Mr. Verlindi. Uh, we want to make sure we understand security related to that. But going back to the technology bond, um, it's a fairly comprehensive process. You have to 
identify square footage, location of classrooms, teaching spaces in each and every building in the district. And when we went down to this meeting, uh, Linda Klein was there, uh, Mr. Valindi, uh, Mr. Uh, Wasserman, the board president, um, uh, uh, or a high-level board officer, typically attends along with the superintendent. And then we had consultants that we were working with also, uh, CBD, our technology consultant that you authorized us to hire, I think, back in November. Uh, we had someone from a financial um, a company called Stoddard Barch out of Ann Arbor. Uh, they're really the state's preeminent experts when it comes to putting a package like this together. Um, and it was very interesting. It was a pre-qualification meeting uh, to um, uh, work with the Department of Treasury. When they looked at the application, they indicated that they uh, thought we'd made a mistake. And we were pretty certain we understood the process and knew exactly what we had to do. Uh, we thought we had that nailed really well. And we asked what that was, and they said, well, you didn't list your school debt. And we said, well, we don't have any. And they were quite surprised by that. Uh, they don't get many applications that come through from school districts that don't already have debt. And so uh, if all this moves forward, uh, we have some timelines that we have to meet in order to notify um, the city and the county that we're going to have this on the election. Therefore, the meeting on, on February 25th or the 20th, I think, is the date. Um, and then on top of that, um, so they were very impressed, I think, with our application and didn't give us any signs that it would not be approved. Uh, but we haven't heard official word. And then at our next uh, facilities finance and operations uh, meeting on that agenda is to discuss with that committee about how we narrow down the capital needs of the district to take another look at a sinking fund um, for the school district because we're just coming off uh, what could have been if we'd leveled, if you had lev levied the, the full two mills for 10 years for a sinking fund, that would have generated about $55 million for capital projects. Of course, we reduced that down to a half mill in the last three years to offset the enhancement millage at the <laughs> county level that was passed. That way, the, it was a wash for three of the five years for the enhancement millage for our local voters. Um, and we have to decide um, what kind of recommendation should we be bringing to the full board? Should we do another 10-year sinking fund? Should it be a five-year? How much? And uh, we'll have to talk about that uh, most likely at that meeting on February the 20th. So if we go to the community with a request for a sinking fund and or a uh, technology bond, that has your authorization and your input before that decision is made. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, we know we live in a community that's very supportive of public education. Historically, requests like that from this board of the community uh, have been passed, and we hope that will still be the case because it's not just an investment in the school district or an, or an investment in children. When you think about it, it's really an investment in the future uh, of this community. So. Uh, we're putting together um, um, a committee uh, working on uh, campaign strategy, and we have to be very careful how we do that. I'm the only employee in the district that can engage in those discussions legally while I'm on the clock. Uh, we've clarified all this with the attorney. Um, you can actively support that. We'll identify roles for the board to play as we move forward, but I'm not trying to be presumptuous about what your decision is going to be, but once you all make that decision that we move forward, uh, there'll be an active role for all of you to play in that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, while we're there on that subject, a little kilter from the agenda. Anybody have any questions for Carl on that whole strategic shift on the technology and the technology funding? That's you know, probably our major focus over the next three months is going to be that effort since that's such a big, long lasting reach and such and a change such a change for the district, both financially and even more for our kids and how we deliver education for the next decade. So delivery will change. Okay. Okay, with that said, we'll move into study discussion session, even though we've carved out a little piece already. Um, <coughs> I'll start to my right. Scott. Well, this has been uh, what I think is a great meeting, um, walking into all these wonderful gifts and mm -hmm. hearing nothing but good news all night. Uh, that being said, I think my sentiment is going to be echoed throughout the board. Um, that is, first and foremost, thank you to the MCEA for a $200 donation, which is uh, very generous on our behalf toward the Looking Sharp Fund. And the uh, gifts uh, 
what I presume to be chocolates from Vanilla Bean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations to all the Distinguished Service Award recipients. Uh, congratulations to the exchange program. They have uh, left the building. Uh, but the coolest thing I thought was walking into these great cards um, that we received from Kelly Jacobs' class at uh, Plymouth. And I just want to say thank you to Dominic and Nick with White Whitey. And finally, uh, Delaney, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to make these cards for me. I'm going to keep them. I've got to find a special place for them. And uh, finally, to Carl, thank you for the uh, wonderful plaque. Um, it is truly a pleasure to serve on this board. And uh, finally, thank you to the public for uh, now having the uh, opportunity to thank them on television uh, for the uh, chance to serve them and, and furthering our goals. So that's it. Well, I just want to echo uh, Scott's comments. I received these really lovely cards from Emily and Lexus. Thank you very much. They're just, they're really nice. I like them a lot. Um, also, thank you, Mr. Ellinger, for this very nice certificate. This is really nice. Years from now, I'll look at it and have fond memories of my <laughs> time on the board. <laughs> and um, <coughs> also, thank you to MCEA. It's really, really nice of you to make this contribution uh, to the Looking Sharp program. Congratulations to the Distinguished Service Award recipients. Um, it must be really gratifying to think about all the lives you've touched here at MPS and um, all the good friends you've made and the, hopefully the great time you've had over the years. Uh, the presentation was great. That is so exciting and I really hope I get to, um, I mean I'm really looking forward to hearing from everybody when they get back, the teachers and the students. I think that'll be really exciting. So, And also uh, congratulations to Emma Rittmeyer on her retirement from MPS, I hope you have a very long and happy retirement. Thank you for your service to MPS. That's all. All right. Well, I echo That's the enough. same sentiments <laughs> of both you guys. Um, and the, the Taiwan Exchange sounds very exciting. I'm really excited for um, students to come back next fall. Um, and hopefully we can have a lot of neat community activities to be able to interact with them. Maybe not just Midland High, but Dao High too. And, um, also, one thing I noticed, um, I mean, once again, the community is so generous in their donations, and one that caught my eye this time was the entrance fee for ninth grade Dow High students to attend the performance of Romeo and Juliet. And you know, often, I don't even give it a thought, and I'm sure a lot of other parents don't either. I got the email from Dow High, I printed off the permission slip, I signed it, and I never really gave it a thought that the opportunity was because someone had um, generously donated some money that my child can go and see this performance. So I want to thank everyone who donates um, to the school district for all these um, different unique opportunities that the kids end up having that they would otherwise not be able to have. Um, and um, as I told you before, my children thank Mr. Ellinger for their day off today. And um, <laughs> hopefully we'll have a great start to the second semester. I can't believe the school year is already halfway done. So, but it's been a great first half of the year. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting to see uh, kids coming in today and having uh, day number five off. I think they were all very thankful for that. <laughs> How a snow day could come after uh, two days off at the end of a semester. So that was pretty. Saw a lot of happy faces on kids uh, today. So um, thank you for the gifts. I just sort of look at this and um, look at the appreciation from all of our stakeholders, the the public that provides us the kids, administrators uh, with the gift here, and also our teachers. It really is nice symbolic of uh, the MPS family and how we never could show enough thanks and appreciation. I know there's, I try to cut articles and send little things to teachers and people in the district and we can never do that enough. Uh, so being on the receiving side of it really feels special. Um, and the cards are great. I, I show those to my kids and I have those on display and they're just, they're, they're really, and we've read a few of those, but those are just amazing. Um, how the kids uh, show the appreciation. It's really, uh, really, really neat. Um, with the, I'm just thinking a lot of the Gerstacker Foundation. Um, we started out working on the committee for the Gerstacker Awards. Uh, Cindy, you and I are on that, and Cindy is showing a lot of her organizational skills off, and she, she has us in great hands going forward with that. Uh, it's great to be a part of that. Um, I also think of the uh, DSA winners uh, with uh, Gerstacker Foundation, also with the, uh, the funding and the experience for the International Exchange Program. 
um, tying in with the IB World Schools and 21st Century Learning. It really is neat to see that, uh, very exciting. Um, I, I did have an item of information to pass on uh, from the Midland County um, ESA and also the uh, Great Star Collaborative. Um, they are starting to do their fundraising uh, for the Longview building. Um, so they are they have a matching fund dollar for dollar with the uh, Herbert H. and Grace A. Down uh, Foundation. So if you donate $250, uh, they are going to, uh, that become matches and it becomes a $500 uh, impact. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get all the resources for early childhood under one building, uh, which I think is great. Uh, you can go to longviewforkids.org or contact the ESA uh, to get a donor card. Um, I will not be at the Board of Education meeting on February 25th. Um, I was invited to uh, lecture at the 2013 Armed Forces Optometric Conference in Atlanta, so I accepted and uh, I will be doing something education related, but not at a board meeting, so please excuse my absence. Lynn? Wow, that sounds exciting. <laughs> and warm. Yes, <laughs> we hope so. Well, I will echo all the thank yous um, to, the, to uh, students and, and Kelly's class, and what a teacher you are. When I looked at all the glitter, I'll take a little bit of it home with me and not on the card. But um, to Andrew and then Jolie. Thank you very much for those. Those are always very meaningful. And we appreciate the time you, you take to uh, write us a little personal note in there. And also to the MCEA, the, the tuning, or I don't want to say tuning yeah. up. I keep doing that. The Looking <laughs> Sharp Fund. <laughs> and, you know, not all of us necessarily have students in music programs, but we all benefit from them. We attend them, or we have friends who, whose students or the kids do. So. It is just such a great program, and, and I know the tuning up was so successful, and, and I wish you all the best with the, the Looking Sharp Fund, and so that was very considerate of the, the teachers to do that for all of us. Um, and congratulations to the, the DSA recipients. I was able to get to the one. I didn't know I was going to be in a picture, but um, <laughs> they are really, if you get a chance, they are just really moving, and it's just really fun to hear the stories and, and, and meet the families. and. and each of the recipients, they are very touched. And then uh, a little different note, there were a couple articles, um, I know John alluded to that, that I, I usually recycle them and, and then forget about them, but nice articles on the all-day kindergarten. I was very impressed with that article and um, have spoken to some some parents and, and some teachers and, and uh, they just really do feel that it's just been a great, great decision that we have made. So that was a very nice article. And there was another uh, real nice article on the pink out for Jen Cisco. We had uh, Mid Midland High staff here tonight, and Jen is a, a math teacher, very highly regarded at Midland High that's been, been going through some, some challenging times. And so the, uh, I think it was, was it the basketball or volleyball team? Basketball. basketball. And um, so they, they had so much respect and, and consideration they put this fundraiser and pink out together for Jen so we wish her all the best as, as she goes through her her treatment and let's see what else do I have down here oh I was walking with a teacher friend the other day an elementary teacher and the iPads as we've talked about in the elementary school they are so excited so we had a little conversation about all the things that these kiddos do that they are they are going to be ahead of the teachers and all of, and the parents before we know it. But they are all. The feedback I got from her was very excited, and they're ex really excited to get it in more students' hands. So excited, leading into our technology, hopeful technology bond, and uh, see what we'll be able to do in the future for that. And one one more thank you. Um, I uh, am a Dibbles volunteer, a literacy testing, and so I was at Siebert last week. And what what fun to, to do that with the kids. And I, I really en I enjoy being able to help, but what I really am impressed with is the literacy of so many of our students. And they come in and they read and, and, and they do, do this with us. And uh, the teachers and the parents and the students are doing a very fine job. And uh, I froze in this little room because it, it was a busy place, but we had we had a good time. And I'll tell you though, after you read the same story over and over and over again, <laughs> <laughs> I think I had it memorized. Um, and then lastly, thank you, Carl, staff, 
all my fellow board members. It's hard to believe that 11 and a half years has passed and uh, that I've been doing this. And um, I continue to enjoy it. And uh, I thank you for this recognition. I, I don't always feel that we need to be recognized because we do this because we, we want to do it and we enjoy it. But um, I will hang it proudly on my, my wall down, down by my computer. And so if I'm having a bad day, I'll just look at it and know I'm doing it for the kids and, and everybody else. So thank you very much for that. I, I really appreciate it. And on to you, Kim. Okay, well, it feels like Christmas again. <laughs> and I love my cards. They're so sweet. One from Raleigh and one from Nolan. Thank you very much. And thank you, Carl, for this certificate. It's very nice. And the candy's wonderful. And I have gifts for everyone, too. This is the One World Schoolhouse by Salman Khan. And uh, Governor Rick Snyder is a big proponent of flipping the classrooms. And this talks about it and explains it and how it works and how it can help our uh, children that we need to focus on. Thank you. Uh, you could pass that down to Angela and Jerry and Yvonne. I already gave one to Wait. Scott and. Oh, so you guys already have it? You already have one. Good. So Scott and John have one. <laughs> and thanks for all the great donations for the schools. We really appreciate it. Okay, and I'll, I'll take it. Kim, thank you. Um, I've read excerpts of this considerably, and I've also gone online and watched some of the tutorials and classes. And I, I suggest you do that. It gives you a vision of what can be and, and what will be. It's probably more appropriate as we go forward in terms of delivery of education. Um, my comments are, uh, again, thanks to the music parents for uh, creating Looking Sharp. Um, I will be donating, donating. I didn't know for sure if they had it opened yet when they were here to present. They hadn't opened the account yet. And I'd like to thank the MCA for uh, their generous donation in our names on that. Uh, uh, that's right where I'd love to see it targeted if anybody's going to do something like that. So thank you. Uh, to Joan, Tim, Reed, and Joe, congratulations. Uh, you serve us well, along with other employees, and it's just nice that you had an opportunity to be recognized by your peers. So congratulations on that. And to uh, Ava Lewis and Madison for the cards. Thank you, and Madison, I'm glad your wish came true. Uh, but I was in Milwaukee this weekend visiting my daughter and driving back and knowing we canceled school and on the terrible roads south of town. And it reminded me, Madison, while you may have gotten a day off today and you're in elementary school, uh, I let my daughter know in high school and all her friends know that I was responsible for canceling school because two years in a row they got out of an exam day. That's true. And I took full credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then next year when I didn't have it, I let them know that was Carl's decision. <laughs> 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 so, and then um, lastly, um, just so the whole board knows, and I'm just short-circuiting versus uh, letting you individually know, FFO will be looking at a broad range of budget proposals as we go forward into budget workshop and uh, and uh, the trade-offs that we get to make or not make as we go along and present those very options and uh, we'll be making sure that uh, those options are brought forward to the full board for consideration as we make trade-offs and we can have a, uh, a reasonable debate on the trade-offs we may have to make. So with that, I'll hand it back to Carl. Uh, just a couple of things. Wednesday through Friday last week, I was at the MASA uh, Winter Conference. That's where almost all the superintendents, all of us from Midland County, were down there for it. And uh, Mike Flanagan, our state superintendent of schools, was our speaker on Thursday. And it was very interesting because he, um, uh, he came out uh, today in a press release and just announced that he thinks we ought to pay uh, every teacher in the state of Michigan $100,000. And his rationale for that was if we want to attract the best talent into the teaching profession, particularly in the area of math and science, you have to offer a competing salary. And um, I would like to think that that would mean that there would be a huge influx of money for our budget from the state of Michigan in the next couple of years, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, that concept is not new. John Engler actually promoted that um, years ago. Um, uh, said you ought to pay every teacher $100,000 let them pay for their own benefit package out of that and see what kind of talent that might draw to the profession. Flanagan also shared with us um, at the conference that he said, um, we are better off as educators as parents are provided more choice, either by us locally or by the legislature, 
uh, to not label that a voucher system. Some people have said that's uh, akin to giving parents a voucher for six different periods during the day because he thinks that's a losing argument politically in the state of Michigan. He said we have to accept the fact that change is here and that parents are asking for more choice, even though the Center for Michigan in their survey uh, that they just announced that some of us uh, participated in um, uh, found that that was not as high a priority for parents in the state of Michigan as some might be led to believe. So I think the jury is still out on that. Flanagan's point of view is you have to provide choice because um, they're doing that in inner city schools with charter schools for uh, um, kids that maybe live in very unfortunate situations. And when you get away from urban areas, parents of means are going to demand that they have choice. And that's the future that I think we need to keep track of. Um, and depending what comes out of the uh, Oxford report, and, and he talked to, to us about how that's going to be slowed down. It's going to take years to implement that. That's not even on the governor's fast track in the way that uh, it was before Christmas. Um, we need to look at that element of change and say how can we provide instructional opportunities for kids and not narrow, narrow our focus just down to the traditional school day. And it's something we've had a lot of conversation about um, here in this district in different forums. So having said that, um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to go. It's always nice to go. It's smart to go because we hear legislative updates and we hear from key people in the state of Michigan that allows me to bring that back and share it in the district and keep us uh, abreast of those trends. Now I'd like to turn the focus on, like I always do in this meeting, and that is over on our staff and kids. And some district recognition goes to Tracy Renfro, who is our Chestnut Hill principal, who coordinated this year's district-wide Sharing Tree program and thank you also to the sharing tree coordinator in each of our, our school buildings. Many of these coordinators have been building representatives for several years. They began working on the sharing tree project in October, and they just finished it up the week of December the 17th prior to break. Thank you also to the United Way of Midland County for coordinating this very special program that benefits so many families, and not just families, but organizations in the community. Moving to Dow High, the Columbia Scholastic Press Association. This is pretty incredible. We know they have a great journalism department at, at both high schools. But at Dow High, the Columbia Scholastic Press Association has announced the finalists for its 2013 Crown Awards. And the update is one of 48 print newspapers to make the list and the only school in Michigan on that list. Crown Award finalists are guaranteed to receive either a gold or a silver crown award in March of 2013. So way to go update. That's a nice accomplishment for them. Also kudos to Dow High School's marketing students who raised really an astounding $6,294 during this past holiday season for Make-A-Wish and Team Mary. Congratulations also to the Midland High marketing students. They raised almost $1,500 for the American Cancer Society among, another, uh, among a number of other fundraisers that they participated in during the holidays. Congratulations, really, from the Midland Daily News, um, Roger, to Madeline uh, Schroeder, Northeast Middle School 8th grade student, who won this year Midland's, uh, Midland Lions 2012 Peace Poster Contest. Madeline's entry will be sent on the state level competition for judging now. Moving over to Midland High School, and you're going to hear me repeat this name uh, for the next four remarks in a row. Um, not often you have a gifted athlete who is just a great um, young man with wonderful character. And if you don't know, I'm talking about Steve Elmer. He's the Class A Football Player of the Year. He's been named the AP Player of the Year in Division One and Two. He's been named to the Michigan Prep Football All-State Dream Team for the 2012 season by the Detroit Free Press. And he won the Anthony Munoz Lineman of the Year Award given to the top prep football lineman in the country, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl Selection Committee announced on January the 4th. So that's pretty incredible. And for those of you who don't know, uh, yes, Mike Rush, I'll say this name in public, he's going to Notre Dame. <laughs> um, and, and Carl, he was awarded the award by Anthony Munoz. Yes, that's what I understand. Uh, going to Northeast, uh, they have something called VIP Tutors. Uh, Viking Inspiring Pioneers has just completed its first full tutoring session of the school year. Close to 80 6th, 7th, and 8th grade Northeast students went to Plymouth through November to work with kindergarten, first, and second grade students. The VIP tutors racked up over 320 
volunteer hours during the month of November, working on reading, counting money, math, word uh, walls, crafts, computer time, and many other tasks. Um, a chemic salute uh, to the Midland High School Key Club. They participated in ringing bells for the S Salvation Army during the holidays, and they raised over $3,000 for doing that. They also participated in the crop walk and raised $5,000 there. There's a lot of these because we haven't met for a, a little bit. Congratulations to uh, the Midland Public Schools Martin Luther King Jr. Regional Scholarship winners who were recognized at the MLK dinner and program on January the 16th down in Saginaw Valley. From Dow High School, it's Megan Flint, Jennifer Jacobs, and Courtney Taylor. And from Midland High, it's Katie Dawson. So congratulations to them. They write an essay. It's judged. Um, it's very interesting to read those essays. They're heartfelt, and they show an appreciation for diversity uh, for our students here from Midland, which I think is important. Um, DECA, uh, over 550 students from more than 25 DECA chapters throughout the uh, region participated in the regional DECA competition at Northwood University on Saturday, January the 19th. The event consisted of many business-themed competitions. Midland High had seven of ten competitors move on to the state competition, and Dow High has a large program. They had 33 of 38 competitors move on to state competition. Well done, Mrs. Marsh uh, from Midland High and Mrs. DeBoer from Dow High. The state competition will be held at Grand Rapids on March 15th through the 17th for a chance to compete at the international competition in April in Anaheim, California. So we have our fingers crossed and hope that maybe we'll have some students headed that way. Congratulations to all these dedicated DECA members who accomplished great things at this year's regional DECA um, competition. And Dow High Poetry Out Loud is a poetry recitation competition sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts. Participating schools have to register with their state to compete in a state competition with the hopes of advancing to a national competition that's held in Washington, D.C. The Dow High Building Champion is sophomore um, Grace or Gracie Karras. Grace will represent Dow High and Lansing for the state finals in February, so we wish her good luck. So that's a lot of student recognitions all in um, representing, I just think, uh, a great school district that if you care to as a student or a family, there's lots of opportunities that you can participate in quality education here, both inside the school day and obviously outside the school day. Great note to end the meeting on, Jerry. Yeah, thank you, Carl. Um, lots of great things happening and lots of work to do to keep it going great. Um, any other items for the sake of the order? Seeing none, we stand adjourned. Thank you.